Okay, so this is a video game review for Hearts of Iron 2 Doomsday. This game was released around 2006 by Paradox Interactive, and if you want a second world war simulator then this game really is for you. To begin with you can pick any world nation to play as. You can start your game in various stages, such as you can, you can begin it in 1936, 1938, 1941, etc. You can also play smaller scenarios, and there's quite a few of them, uh, based on particular World War II conflicts, such as North Africa, the Winter War, or D-Day landings. The Doomsday version of this game extends until 1953 and comes packed with a Doomsday scenario whereby the Allies face off against the Communist bloc. To say that this is a pretty epic struggle is really an understatement. This game will not only test your abilities to move armies around the map, but also in supplying them with the required materials. I remember in my Germany campaign that uh, my my sort of my war machine, if you like, came to a grinding halt after I was unable to supply it with the the required oil. So it's not just about moving troops, it's also about the whole general war effort, if you like. And doing deals with other nations in order to exchange money, oil, general supplies is all very commonplace. The diplomacy system works great in this game. It allows you to engage in friendly relations with other nations, join alliances, declare war, exchange technologies, provinces, materials, and even divisions of troops. It works pretty well, as I said, and it, it really just extends what was uh, good under, say, Victoria Empire Under the Sun, another paradox game which I have reviewed. The intelligence system, which I think is new to Hearts of Iron 2, allows you to spy on enemy and friendly nations. It's done pretty well in this game, and adds an another level of detail to the game. Sabotage uh, technology research is something that you can do. You can fund partisans within other nations' borders and attempt coups as well. For me, the most useful of these is surely uh, the coups, which, if successful, it can really alter the, the balance of power irre irrevocably, as shown in this particular scenario as Britain becomes fascist and joins me in its war against the Allies. I was playing as Germany here. And this just really helped. Up till then, Britain had been a thorn in my side, but I was managed to uh, instigate a coup, coup d'état, and, well, you know, hey presto, they were on my side. The diplomatic system will be familiar to those who have played other Paradox games, as I've mentioned before, uh, Victoria Empire Under the Sun. And the belligerence value, uh, which, is, which is given to certain certain factions, is basically a nation's bad boy score, just made public. So the more nations you declare war on, the, the worse your belligerence value is going to get, and the more other factions are going to hate you, other nations are going to hate you. And this system is just so ridiculously comprehensible, yet works so well. And it's why that when I when I switch back to the Total War game series, I just wonder why the computer AI is just so random and frustrating, when they could have easily just borrowed this simple mechanism. Uh, but that's another gripe for another day. The scripted events also give the nations a gentle push towards the inevitable, though don't overpower the experience. Graphically, Hearts of Iron 2 is a slight upgrade from the first game, and looks a little nicer without doing an EU3 with, with garish 3D graphics. This game has some of the best music I've heard in a computer game really ever, but the slight, the slight downside to this, and this is going to sound strange, is that actually it's a little bit too good for the game. It's very adrenaline pumping, which in the beginning, when you're not actually at war, seems a little bit out of place. But also, when when it when it does get going, it's you know it's pretty good. But it seems more more in tune with say like a Steven Spielberg film, war film, than this particular game. Um, again, it's a it's a weird one. It doesn't kind of sit sit so well. I don't think anyway. There's also a scenario editor included in the game. However, for me you can easily just mod the, the particular text files yourself, as it's all very open, and Paradox are very good with their games like that. However, despite the fact that you can macro-manage any nation's war effort, and in theory, alter the course of history, the game has its major limitations. The main one has to be that there are basically only eight major nations to play as, Britain, France, USA, Germany, USSR, Japan, Italy, and China. Playing as Poland, Czechoslovakia, Belgium, Finland, or any other nation is basically pointless as stopping the main powers is vir virtually impossible given that their tech level and their manpower level and a whole bunch of other things that I really can't get into in detail, but you'll just have to trust me. I mean, this is in 
you know, stark contrast to, say, Victoria Empire Under the Sun, which could see you build the likes of Tuscany or Bavaria into, like, world powers. Here, this just doesn't happen. That said, though, I've had plenty of fun playing as, say, the USSR and uh, defending to the last against a rampant Germany, or even as playing as the, uh, the Third Reich, conquering Europe. Um, it helps that there's no swastikas on the flag, makes playing as the Nazis a little bit more agreeable. The second gripe I have to mention is when you get when you start the game, it's just there's really not that much to do once you've started production on infantry and tanks, and you're doing research. There's really nothing much to do until 1939 comes around. The solution to this might be starting the game later, but it would have been far better if the developers had added an even faster mode to the time. Uh, sort of sequence. They, um, now Paradox normally do pretty pretty well as far as the, the game speed is concerned, but given that this one, uh, this game deals with hours as well as days, uh, an extra one, extra fast one would have been even better, and given the fact that I can't find the particular file that needs modding, this is another kind of gripe. Whenever I start up a new campaign I have to go through this kind of laborious thing of waiting till you know, something actually happens, and that can be you know, after say two proper gaming sessions, so whereas you really just want to get down into the action, but anyway this is a really hard game to review because on the one hand it is really faithful war simulator with tons and tons of depth and historical content and really doesn't skimp on detail however the nature of this realism rules out playing as basically every nation on the globe bar the major seven that I spoke about I'd certainly recommend this game to any war fanatic or say a teenage history student as it's a really good tool for learning about you know the second world war and what happened and in what order and it's a decent day game into the bargain. But um, once you've played as a few nations, you've pretty much had all you can get out of this game. Now, this is one of Paradox's better games, but I still, uh, I still think it comes a distant second to Victoria Empire Under the Sun, in my opinion, as it's a little bit too specific, and it's, it caters for that niche anyway. So, in the end, I'm going to give this game a 6.8 out of 10. And that's me.